easy for me to say. Park Gregory joins us right now. He will be on the call for all three games this weekend here. Mississippi State and Long Beach State, and uh, nothing like easing into the season. A little top 25 matchup right out of the gate. Yeah, there's two this weekend. You've got us and uh, Long Beach State, and then you've got uh, Vanderbilt hosting Oklahoma State. So yeah. two premier matchups. Man, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, Long Beach State, the, you know, the dirt bags. I mean, if, if you look at a blue-collar program, if you ask all the college coaches around the country and you polled everybody, you would have to say they would probably be in every coach's top ten just because of the way they play. Now, the thing about it is like for us, you know, we think of Long Beach State as a the the namesake in, in Omaha every year, but they yeah. haven't been back to Omaha since nineteen ninety eight. It's been a long time. That was Brad Freeman and those guys when Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Um they play a different type, uh, a different style also. They were better offensively last year, a couple two or three years ago. They were like could not score at all. No. A little bit better offensively last year, and they've got some pieces coming back. Yeah, I think, what, two years ago they hit uh, 242 as a team. It's not good. No, and uh, Eric Valenzuela came in, and you know this is his third year, but really his first year. You know, the first year was a COVID year. Right. And they were good. They, they were right in the top 15. And then last year they couldn't have fall practice. They couldn't have you know, you know early spring practice. They played conference only because of the mandates out in California. And so they got hot as the year went on. I think their first game they went to Hawaii, who was playing their 13th game. Hmm. And so, yeah, the, the thing they've got is, is typical West Coast. They've got really good pitching, and they defend the heck out of it. Yeah. And so they, they're going to try to make you make mistakes. Not going to drive a bunch of balls out of the ball yard. No, that's, they're, they're, it's crazy. When you look at their stats, last year they struck out eight times a game. We struck out six and a half times per game in SEC play. And so if you put Long Beach State in strikeouts per game in the league, because you can't, you know, marry – apples and apples with their stats because they only play 43 games but if you look at strikeouts per game they would have been second best in the sec last year so they don't strike out if you look at walks conversely they only had 3.3 walks per game we had like 4.5 they would have been in the bottom third in the league in walks so what's that tell you they They put put in play play. everything goes in play 1.2 on the fly ball to ground ball ratio they pop everything up they don't hit a lot of home runs. They just put a lot of balls in the air. It's kind of interesting when you yeah. look at them offensively. This Mississippi State team might hit some home runs this year. What, four or five guys back that hit double digits last year in home runs, and then you've got guys like Kellum Clark and Brad Combus who can make a big jump. Is this going to be a mashing Mississippi State team? I think it's got a chance to be more of that uh, long ball, that, that launch angle hitting team. Now, this weekend, you start talking about Long Beach State and how they kind of play. You know, Ramirez, who's going to go tomorrow night, four-pitch guy, heavy sink with fastball, probably had the best changeup in the Cape Cod League this summer, guy that keeps it down, two-to-one ground ball to fly ball. And so tomorrow night might not be that night because the wind's going to be blowing in from left field 10 miles an hour. Now, you may see some action on Sunday. Wind's going to be blowing out to left on Sunday. But, I mean, this is yeah, this is a team. You know, about two hours ago it was blowing out to left. Yeah, I may have, if you put me at second base about an hour or two ago, man, I may have got might one have, out. Might have had a chance. Had a chance, man, and I would have pimped it too. I'm sure you would have. <laughs> oh, it would, You know what? Deservedly so. It would be okay. Absolutely. It yeah. would be okay. Um, we were having – a conversation yesterday about, and and it kind of stemmed from a, a poll question that Borky put out earlier in the week about scoreboard notwithstanding. What is it that keeps bringing you back to the ballpark? What is it about baseball, if you're a baseball guy, and I know you are, that that is special? You know, it's it's, it's amazing. You know, and we're all baseball guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you are too, and and Brian is too. Even though you're a Giants fan, that's okay. I'm not a Dodgers fan. I grew up a Cubs fan. Um, You know, I grew up as a kid, and I think it's a relationship sport because there's so much downtime. You know, what's that old adage, you know, the game lasts three hours, but there's only six minutes of action. Yeah. And so you had plenty of conversation time, and whether it be with your your family, your dad, your grandfather, whatever. And now it's kind of morphed into now your kids are that age. And now you come to the ballpark and you talk to them when you're not broadcasting. I think, you know, this is just a – to me, it's my favorite sport because it's more conversational. And, um, you know, I've been coming to this ballpark, you know, three ballparks ago, back before the the old dude was here, back when it was wooden bleachers. And so you start coming to that ballpark. And, you know, as a, as a redneck kid from Nanawaya, you walk out here, and the first thing you see is the, there's grass on the field, and he thinks the greenest grass you've ever seen in your life, and these guys are larger than life. I mean, we all three grew up in the state of Mississippi, and – 
you know, we don't have professional sports, and these guys were our idols. I always thought, you know, that you see the you see the world, you know, at its at its greatest at twelve years old, you yeah. know. And so coming to the ballpark at twelve years old, these were our, you know, these you, were you our got a idols. Boy, that's in that neighborhood. Yeah, right? he's eleven right now, and he thinks he's, you know, he thinks he's seventeen. So kind of rein that back <laughs> in a little bit. <laughs> yes. So was he seeing the world as a 12-year-old when he was six? No, what he's doing is, is he'll come in about the third inning, and we'll be right in the middle of a broadcast, and it doesn't bother him at all. And he'll just knock me on my shoulder, and he'll, like, put his hand out, like, hey, give me your debit card. And then I look, in a, you know, down around the concourse, and there's, like, eight kids running around with Cokes and, and popcorn, you know. I'm the only guy that spends 70 bucks on a trip to the Jeez. concession stand. <laughs> He's thanks, Dad. <laughs> Round on me. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. He'll never know. Have you gotten your your words for the weekend yet? No, I haven't. No, I haven't yet. She's uh my daughter uh-huh. is, is seventeen, turned seventeen yesterday, and she'll send me a word every now and then. And she finished like state a second the state spelling competition like three or four years ago, and so she'll come up with these crazy words that you've got to work into the broadcast. That I've got to work into the broadcast. And and now that I said something about it, now everybody and their brother says, hey, say this, but I only do that and with her. Sometimes so, you get a suggestion from here in the press box. I, I do. And a lot of those words, you, this is one of the seven words you can't you use can't on the radio. Use, yeah. 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 We, had, we had a few years ago where we were talking about stand-up comedy. I said, Bart, you got to work in. He wants the big piece of chicken. <laughs> We had that. Oh, com- that was the that was the home run call. We were yeah. we were sitting here, and it was a group of us talking about how Dad gets the big piece. Daddy of chicken. gets the big piece of chicken, and I also said that you always save save the middle biscuit for Daddy. You know, yeah. you, you've got the round right, pan, right, right. you know, and so you never eat the, the the biscuit, you know, because you save that for the cook. So was it du- was it Dustin Skelton? Well, the first one was um, I think it was Magnamy hit the yeah. first one. And he then wants, Skelton came up here, and so he it was, it was all wants the big piece. Of yeah, it was all tongue in cheek, <laughs> just by a conversation. There was about four or five of us sitting in here. That's, uh, that's that'll get you stuff. in trouble in a hurry. Is when you start talking before a game starts, and people start daring to do things. Somebody yeah. tweeted something about big piece of chicken. I was like, did he say it? And we we were all huddled uh, around a laptop yeah. trying to listen over the crowd. Wasn't a great moment. What is the? Great, uh, but it was a moment. What is the moment or the memory that stands out for you more than any other from last season? Uh, I mean, there were so many. Um, I mean, I think you know, the super regional here is just is is pretty cool, um, and it's 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 a it's just a it's a different vibe in postseason play, and it is at all these ballparks. But you know, the Notre Dame series was pretty cool, um, and it was against you know, Stanford as well. I think it's just a different vibe. The the Sunday with Ole Miss, the Super Bowl all weekend. Just because that weekend it, it came down, the Casey came back on Saturday and was so good after we won on Friday, and then you know, the the Sunday game, you're coming down, coming from behind, and then you know Tanner Allen with the bases clearing triple. I thought that was big too, but I think it's super regional time at this place is just different. Well, and and I was going to ask you, we were talking yesterday, and I just said every ballpark has kind of its own feel, which is weird, and yeah. maybe that's kind of like touchy feely. You can't, you kind of intangible. You know, Swayze's got a certain feel. Uh, Alec Box has got a certain feel. Uh, Ball Walker and Fayetteville, you know, feels a certain way. Is this still too new to have that, or is this place where this field sits, is there enough there that there's a feel in the ballpark when you step in? Yeah, it's um, it's, it's, it's different. It's different than the old ballpark. Yeah. To, to be honest with you, I mean, and I have some – some of the old timers want to fight me. I, mean, I think it's cooler. I mean, I think it's I think it's louder. You know, one of the things you don't really realize is, you know, a lot of this upper deck was built with metal, and so a lot of the sound just it, it just stands right behind home plate. I mean, it, just, it gets louder here now. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things too is, is, you know, we had the championship celebration, and I have no. I, evidently, they asked everybody and their brother, and they declined. And I had a chance to MC the championship deal, and I'm sitting in there on on the mound or at home plate, and you're looking up, and you're like, "How in the world does an 18 year old kid throw a strike right here?" Because it's just wall of people. The stadium's right up on you. It's a pretty cool vibe. And you know, hey, you know, when you're pitching, and you've been around these college guys. I mean, they're coming from places, and they, you know, they've been pitching in front of 200 people, and a lot of times you can kind of get away from it. You can look to the outfield, and the thing about standing out there, I mean, you can't get away from people, and it, it just messes with you mentally. I've talked to a couple of coaches in the SEC that said that's the thing about 
this style of play is is really the first time in their life that they can't mentally get away from it. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible, and it all gets started tomorrow. Thir Hard to believe. Thirteen thousand and change season tickets. Yeah, be a bunch of people. It's a lot. <laughs>